สวัสดีค่ะระยะหลังมีการพูดถึงเศรษฐกิจสร้างสรรค์กันมากยิ่งขึ้นนะคะแต่ว่าอะไรคือเศรษฐกิจสร้างสรรค์หมายถึงอุตสาหกรรมภาพยนตร์ดนตรีแฟชั่นเท่านั้นหรือเปล่าดิฉันได้มีโอกาสพูดคุยกับคุณจอห์นฮาวกินส์ผู้เขียนหนังสือชื่อ The Creative Economy หรือว่าเศรษฐกิจสร้างสรรค์และอีกเล่มหนึ่งที่เขาเขียนนะคะก็คือ Creative Ecologies แปลเป็นไทยก็คือระบบนิเวศสร้างสรรค์ความเชี่ยวชาญและการศึกษาอย่างเจาะลึกของคุณจอนทำให้เขาได้รับเชิญไปพูดในเวทีต่างๆทั่วโลกรวมทั้งเป็นที่ปรึกษาของบริษัทและของประเทศอีกหลายประเทศด้วยนะคะและหนังสือของเขาก็มีการอ้างอิงกันอย่างกว้างขวางค่ะคุณจอนเป็นชาวอังกฤษค่ะอายุ67ปีเดินทางมาเมืองไทยไม่นานนี้นะคะแล้วก็มีความเชี่ยวชาญและประสบการณ์เพราะว่าก่อนหน้านี้เคยทำงานในหลายภาคอุตสาหกรรมค่ะไม่ว่าจะเป็นหนังทีวีหรือว่าจะเป็นสื่อสิ่งพิมพ์และปัจจุบันก็เป็นอาจารย์ในมหาวิทยาลัยด้วยค่ะจอห์น a lot of countries these days are talking about creative economy, building a creative economy. But what is creativity in the first place? Creativity, there are many definitions. My definition is it's using ideas to make new ideas. So it's taking an idea from somewhere or someone or some place, using it, reusing it, giving it one's own personal imprint. And using that to create a new idea. So all countries have creativity in them somehow. Everybody, it's individuals. It's individuals. Creativity starts with an individual in a particular place having a particular idea. And yes, everybody, everybody is born with that creative imagination. Children are actually the most creative beings on the planet. Why? You were you were at your peak creativity aged about three to four years old. Because we, all, all we do when we are born is is take in sense data, compare it to what we have already observed, and try to make sense of the world. And if we don't like the world, we cry. And if we like the world, we giggle and we laugh. Uh -huh. And that's how children behave. That's when they're very young. That's how children behave. Children are very creative. They like to draw, and they're not embarrassed by thinking, "Is it a good drawing or a bad drawing?" They just like to draw. They ask questions. They ask questions. Adults sometimes find amusing, or strange, or weird, or wonderful. And then, as we go to school, we we sort of become embarrassed by that, and we lose that confidence in our mm -hmm. own creativity. Mm -hmm. So, how to nurture one's creativity when we grow up? Well, again, it starts at school. If you have teachers that respond to that childish sense of wonderment of the world, and 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 encourage people, encourage the children to ask questions and and treat children uh, seriously. You know, okay, you asked that question, and here's an answer. Let's try and work it out together. Mm. Whereas some educational systems don't like children being creative, and they 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 ask them not to be creative. They don't ask them to draw. They say, listen to what I'm saying and repeat it back to me. And if you memorize it correctly and repeat it back to me. Accurately, then you'll pass the exam and go on to the next level. So that's not the way to go, right? No, it's not the way to go. You've got to encourage people to dream. You know, I don't want to exaggerate this, but a little bit of dreaminess, a little bit of fantasy, is a good thing. To ask questions, to try and, let's say, try and make sense of the world. And if there's a different or a better or more enjoyable, to have the confidence to go with it and try it out. If it doesn't work, pick yourself up, try again. What is creative economy? Well, creative economy is 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 taking that ability and 
using it not just in one's own um, personal life, if you like, uh, in one's own inner life, um, but using it in one's business and using it to make products and services, make them, make them different, make them new. When we say creative economy, I tend to think about films, mm. music, yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Are these considered creative economies? There are 10 or 12, economies? 15 core sectors oh. that are basically sort of design, media, um, entertainment. So it's all the ones you mentioned. It's, it's, it's music, it's film, it's television, it's publishing, it's art as well, it's design, it's video games. It's, it's software, digital media. They're all the core creative industries. But if you think about design, or you think about video, clearly they have an impact on today, in an online world, almost everything that we do. So these are the sectors that governments should encourage? Yes. Every government wants to encourage them. Most governments find it really hard to do so. They don't, governments don't really understand it. What do governments not understand? Well, they don't understand that, that, and, and, and also they don't like it because creativity is personal and it often fails. Yeah? I mean, farming doesn't quite fail in the same way. Sometimes we have natural disasters and it is a disaster, everything fails. Right. But by and large, the farmers don't fail, they just get on planting the seed, looking after the stock. Manufacturing mm -hmm. is sort of doesn't fail, but if I'm coming up with new ideas, if I'm realistic, I know that most of my ideas aren't going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to fail 100% several times a day. You know, the failure rate in the credit economy is extraordinarily high. Mm -hmm. Governments like to support things where there's a guarantee of success then they can go to the media and they can go to the voters and say, look, we're going to put this money into this and we're going, a year later or two years later, we're going to get that result. Mm -hmm. You can't guarantee that with creativity. So it's, a, it's a very risky operation. It's, oh. it's psychologically risky because I'm putting myself on the line and I'm going to fail a lot of times. And it's financially risky because the investors, it could be just my own money, it could be my company could be a bigger operation. They're going to lose a lot of money. So it's, it's risky and it's difficult, and governments find that really hard to cope, particularly the guys who are 50, 60 years old who grew up in a manufacturing economy. So it's a sector that the government should back off somehow, let them yes, grow I by mean, themselves. Yes, the, the governments can't micromanage creativity. You can't instruct creativity to have. You could instruct a road to be built or a hospital to be, or a school to be built. You can't instruct people to have wonderful ideas. It doesn't work. You can build a factory to replicate manufactured goods, which may be based on a new idea. But you can't, as a government or indeed any institution, instruct that original idea to happen. You have to create the conditions. You create the the networks, the communities, I call it the ecology, the creative ecology. You create, you sustain a creative ecology. And then, having done that in a rather gentle way, you stand back and if you've got it right, that ecology will allow creative people to flourish.